Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Uh, hit the like button and please subscribe. I appreciate it so much. And my subscribers that have already uh, signed on, I just, I can't thank you enough. It's a blessing. You're a blessing. Well, here we go again. Elderly Michigan woman falls victim to another act of left-wing political violence. On September 20th, an elderly woman was shot in the upper back while handing out pro-life pamphlets in the Ionia, I-O-N-I-A, Ionia County, Michigan neighborhood. Now, we have an Ionia here close by where I live. And I think that is right, Ionia, I-O-N-I-A County, Michigan neighborhood. The victim was canvassing in opposition to an abortion ballot proposal very similar to California AB 2223. At one particular stop, she became engaged in a heated verbal exchange with the individual inside a house, inside the house. The victim, who's 83 years of age, has elected to remain anonymous, has stated that she was shot while leaving the residence. The victim said that she was shot in the back slash shoulder while leaving a residence during a heated conversation and that the man who shot her was not part of her conversation, she said in a statement released by her pro-life organization on Saturday. The victim does not know the identity or motive of her shooter, she added in the press release. Following the attack, the won't wounded woman was able to summon enough strength to drive herself to a local hospital. Her wounds were successfully treated by medical professionals. She is currently continuing her recovery at home. This shooting serves as another example of the increased frequency of political violence in the United States. I'm afraid it's going to get a lot worse. I hope I don't eat my words. It wasn't long ago when an unhinged Democrat showed up at Supreme Court Justice Brent Kavanaugh's Maryland home armed to the teeth. Prior to that, it was Louis, Louisville May, mayoral candidate Greg Greenberg dodging bullets literally. The mayoral hopeful's assailant was, as you guessed, another left-wing activist by the name of Quintez Brown. Brown was approached Greenberg outside. Brown approached Greenberg outside his campaign headquarters, fired his weapon, grazing the clothes of his target. The majority of progressive liberals have always been mentally unstable, so you might be asking yourself, why have they suddenly become so violent? They simply following orders. The public grandstanding of Democrats like Maxine Waters, Chuck Schumer, has weaponized, the, weaponized their base, which contains plenty of individuals who have a proven willingness to commit political violence. These violent acts of political nature are becoming a chronic condition for our nation. Our prognosis will remain the same as long as irresponsible politicians continue using their platform to install hatred and promote aggression to their constituents. My, oh my, oh my. Now, before I go on to another um, article that I have uploaded here uh, from another YouTuber's channel, I just uh, read a little bit of it listen to it a little bit of it and they now say in prisoners are down and out they need a stimulus check here we sit a lot of us without even a home over their heads cars to even sleep in 
no food for the children. I wonder how parents afford to school kids their clothes this year. And are the schools still giving out free lunches? But yet the criminals, the robbers that maimed, maimed someone maybe, crippled them, or shot them dead, child molesters, adult rapists that rapes adults, beats them to a pulp, some in the end kill them, but they need a stimulus check because they're down and out. I can't tell you how mad that just hit me. I mean, I was absolutely just furious. And here we sit needing help to pay our bills. I took a break. I had to take a break. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Is that unthinkable? That the prisoners in all the prisons now, how many prisoners all across the United States of America need a stimulus check? After what they've committed with their crimes? Next article. Oh, come on here now. I'm shaking. I'm utterly shaking here. And I'm not cold. But I'm just that upset. Big time Social Security rise with this new bill. And here are my words. If we are lucky enough to get a raise on Social Security or even SSI, disability, retirement, retirees on retirement, who's going to have their hands right there to grab most of it? It happens every time. Social Security recipients could be getting an additional 2400 a year and benefits if a new bill recently introduced to Congress wins approval. The substantial bonus would be something seniors would no doubt welcome as surging inflation wipes out their annual cost of living increases. The Social Security Expansion Act was introduced on June 9th by U.S. Rep. Peter DeFazo, DeFazo Democrat of Oregon, and U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders Vermont, under the terms of the bill, anyone who is a current Social Security recipient or who will turn 62 in 2023 would receive an extra 200 in each monthly check. The bill is timely for a couple of reasons. First, it follows a disturbing Social Security Administration announcement earlier this month that Americans will stop receiving their full Social Security benefits in about 13 years without actions to bluster the program. Is that bluster or bluster? Boaster. B-O-L-S-T-E-R. You know me and my words. <laughs> Sorry. It also comes during a period of historical high inflation that has a particularly big impact on seniors living on fixed incomes, many of whom rely solely on Social Security payments. This year's Social Security Cost of Living Adjustments, COLA, of 5.9% is based on inflation figures from 2021. But since then, inflation has pushed well above 8%, meaning Social Security recipients today are actually losing money. You know what? i got to say a piece here. People on disability, to me, has always been put down. A working man and woman that reaches retirement age and can retire, paid into Social Security, 
all the time that they work their jobs till retirement. How much do they get a month? Well, see what happens? We think, and I did when I was younger, that when I worked and I paid in Social Security, state, federal tax, it all went into my pot. No. No. It goes in a great big pot for everybody. So anybody can get their hands in what you worked so hard for all them years till retirement. And by the time they're done giving it out to everybody else, your pot you thought you had, that you paid into, where is it? So we have always been known, even retirement people, not on disability. Was knocked down to barely above below income money. So all them years you worked paid in all that money. You thought you would have a nice little nest egg when you retired unless you had put some away in savings and bless your hearts I honor you if you did but some couldn't even afford that with a minimum wage at the in them years barely make ends meet barely pay for a home feed a family buy clothes whatever else may be needed a washer and a dryer stove to cook on furnace to heat or anything we have always been below level but they used our money for this and that and every other thing else for everybody else how many people have been found that claimed and filed for disability and then they were caught they weren't disabled at all they finally did find some, hundreds probably, thousands, I don't know. But they couldn't send people to every block in every town to watch the ones that applied for disability to come out of their homes, see if they were capable of working. And then the ones that applied for disability that couldn't work, even in a wheelchair, mentally unstable, they were denied. Poverty level. That's where your money goes when you work your life away. You're still under poverty level. Unless you had a nice secure sum set aside. And I hope and pray that most of you just did. I ruptured three vertebrae in my back in my late 30s and early 40s. I worked in nursing homes, hospitals, and private care homes. And in a hospital, I called for the orderly to come help me turn this 250 pound patient. And he never showed up, so I had to get her turned. I had to get her on her side to keep her from getting bed sores, which she already had and had to get her off of her back. And I popped three vertebrae in my back. The first check I got was $260 to live on. When I did, finally, after four years of fighting for disability. So, I was told that if I wanted to try to go to work, that a job where I wouldn't be lifting, I could try and they would uh, take a dollar out of every two dollars I made. S 
So I went to work and this was just cooking meals for an elderly couple in a little town. But then after three days, my back hurt me so bad, I couldn't even stand up. They kicked me off. I was left with nothing. No check. Nothing to live on. So I went back. Took me another two years. I think almost three. And I had to move in with my sister. And they took care of me. And I had to fight for two, let's just say two to three years. I can't remember, it's been so many years back. Uh, but I finally got back on my disability. But that by that time, the arthritis had set into the things in my back. And then I became totally, completely disabled. But the money I had to live on, I couldn't make it. I couldn't rent an apartment. Poverty level, poverty level. It's a shame. Now those that weren't disabled, that worked hard all their life, Every day, except maybe one day on the weekend, maybe two if they were lucky, they got off to spend time with their family and help raise their children, which they did without, working eight, ten hours a day from maybe the age of 18 to 20 until the day that they honestly, in 60s, got to retire. And they're still... Still, unless they had some saved back, big time. Because even big time don't go with today. No. And we're still poverty. But yet the government is rich. They can do anything they want with that hard-earned money that you made. And they can do anything they want. While we sit here under poverty level still now you know we get that raise 5.9 percent raise somebody's going to be there with their hand out they're going to raise your house payments they're going to raise the rent payments i wouldn't doubt my rent won't go up again it already went up 40 bucks and i probably got the cheapest rent in the whole united states of america but i live in a little uh house you could maybe call it little, tiny, whatever. I call it my little tiny home. I've been here almost 20 years. And I love my little home. But the last cola rays come along. Medicare jumped in. Of course, you all know. And then my rent went up $40. So what's going to happen if we get this raise here now? Probably the same thing. Somebody's going to be there to take most of it. I always get these ads on here about uh, Social Security. Well, you call us. We want to talk to you about your uh, Social Security Medicare plan and Medicaid and all that stuff. We want to talk. Maybe you'll get that money back and put back in your check that you had taken out by Medicare. Who in the hell are they kidding? If any of you got that money back on Social Security, leave a comment. Just leave a comment. Don't give any information. Just say, I did. That's all you got to do. Say, I did. And I'll bless you. Because all they want to do is, is get you into their grip of these Medicare and Medicaid programs and... I just don't, I ignore them. I mean, I've had 15 to 20 calls a day. My phone has rang off the hook. Finally, I have just shut the bell off or the sound off on my uh, cell phone here. I don't think any, hardly anybody's got a 
old-fashioned phone anymore. I can remember those kinds on the wall where you had to turn the crank. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. No. I'm sticking with the programs I am with now. And I am well covered. But I think it's it's such a shame. With all that money that the government has thrown here, thrown there, over all the years. Not just over the past four years, six years. All the years. That we couldn't have gotten enough money so we could live like humans. You know what I mean? Disabled, retirees. I don't know. But now, they're saying prisoners, they're down and out. They need a stimulus check. The new bill aims to ease the financial strain of boosting each recipient's monthly check. The average monthly Social Security check is about $1,658. Oh my God, I'd be living in heaven. I would be living in heaven if I got that much, but I'm disabled. I'm not worthy. Meaning a 200 increase would represent a 12% boost. Many, many seniors rely on Social Security for the majority, if not all, of their income, said Martha Shedden, C-H-E-D-D-E-N, Shedden, president of the National Association of Registered Social Security Analysts. $200 a month can make a significant difference for many people. The bill also has change, changes that are designed to tie the COLA increase to more realistic economic markers and to make and keep the program more solvent. Primarily, the bill proposes adding more funding to the SSI COFERS, C-O-F-F-E-R-S, COFERS, COFERS, by applying the Social Security payroll tax on all income above $250,000. Currently, earnings above $147,000 aren't subject to the Social Security tax. Even if the bill is in its current form, doesn't pass Congress. Experts expect lawmakers are going to have to move on some kind of change to Social Security to ensure it serves the needs of recipients well into the future. Because our future is bleak. And it's getting worse. It's getting terrible. I went and got, I didn't go, but my helper went and got, um, oh, uh, three pound sack of cat food for my kitties. Three pounds. Ten bucks. Ten dollars for just that three pound sack of cat food. Let alone the groceries. I got a letter yesterday about my food stamps. My EBTs. I don't know if I'll get another raise on those. But for one person, I do get by. So I'm not, I'm not going to complain. I thought I would get just a little bit more. But because you go to buy meat, the meat eats it up. So, what do you do? And it's going to be worse. They're saying now, with all this mechanical stuff and all of these Walmarts and Kmarts and Targets, grocery stores, are all going on mechanical stuff. You do your own checkouts. Yeah, self-serve checkouts. Where's that put the workers? The ones that need a job. The machines are taking over human people that need jobs. But Biden says, oh my God, there's jobs all over the place. Millions of jobs all over. The more you get on the internet, the more you read these articles and stuff, when did they start using the machinery, putting in, uh, making cars? A lot of the mobile factories, 
that make automobiles now, which they probably are not making so many, being that we've got to go, they've got to go to electric. Just buy, buy a scooter, just like they do over there in, in Japan. Just buy a scooter. I have one. I don't use it anymore because uh, I got scared uh, of the loose dogs. And in my town, they're very, very strict about that. You must have your dog on a leash. You must have your dog on a chain. You must have a fenced-in yard. But sometimes them little babies will pop right out of that fence. A bigger dog can jump that fence if it's five foot, four foot, five foot. Yeah. And I got scared because I thought if I ever get attacked by a dog, who's going to be there to help me? So I got scared. So mine sits in the garage and it's, I'm going to sell it. Yeah, I'm going to sell it. There's no sense in me keeping it. I've had it uh, probably two years now, three years. I used it one summer. And it's a good little scooter. It's by Pride. And uh, it's called Pride. And uh, believe it or not, I could carry home a hundred dollars worth of groceries from the dollar store yeah I could I love it but I won't use it not anymore because it's not safe you get these open scooters for elderly people they're not safe they've got to have some sort of security hood put on them but oh well that's another another story all right let's go on see what else I've got here I'm jumbling away I might just well keep up. Let's see here. Now that one about President Trump, I tried to get it again. I cannot get it. But it's where everybody's against him again. And then I saw somewhere uh, he might, just might, I don't know, don't quote me on it, but he might have to face some, uh, they say prison time. I say jail time. But who am I? I'm just me. Well, let's try this one here, and I will go looking for some more articles. The Hill defends Biden from blame for failing economy. The Hill, a pro-Biden news organization, is trying to defend the president from Republicans blaming him for the turn downturn in the stock market. While Biden has so far been able to dodge blame for the recent stock Market declines in the wake of interest rates hikes by the Federal Reserve. Republicans are increasingly tying the faltering markets to the White House, warning Americans not to vote for Democrats in November's midterm election if they value their portfolios, wrote the Hills reporters Alec Ganitano and Tobias Burns. Ganitano. Gang, Gangitano, G-A-N-G-I-T-A-N-O, Gangitano, and Tobias Burns. The article pointed to comments made by major, majority, minority leader Mitch McConnell, representative of Kentucky, on Wednesday. The stock market has plummeted below where it was when President Biden took office, cutting the value of America's retirement savings just as the cost of living has soared, McConnell said on the Senate floor. Consumer prices are through the roof. Supply chains chaos left and right. The worst single year for both groceries, electricity inflation since back in when Jimmy Carter, in the Jimmy Carter area. Yeah, the worst single year for both grocery, electricity inflation, inflation since back in the Jimmy Carter era. The Hill also cited comments by Senator Mike Rounds, representative of South Dakota. This is a policy-induced bear market, stated Rounds on Wednesday. It's a policy-induced recession that we're moving into. It's a policy-induced time for significant inflation, he added. Critics on the Hill article highlight that the market actually has declined under the Biden administration, with estimates showing that Americans lost roughly $9 trillion on the stock market by the end of the second quarter this year. 
Larry Summers, in economics, who worked under former President Barack Obama, predicted that Biden's COVID-19 stimulus would have a detrimental effect on the stock market, saying it would set off infl inflammationary measures of a kind we have not seen in a generation. Critics also point out that this is not the first time the Hill has done this. In April of 2021, only 225,000 jobs were added to the economy, which lagged expectations of an increase between 734,000 and 1,734,000. Nevertheless, the Hill criticized Republicans as falsely claiming that the reports were the products of overzealous government response that could kneecap the economy. My, oh my, oh my. Well, folks, that is going to be that for this video. And it is 2, 11 a.m. my time right now. And I'm not tired. I may dig up one or two more. So, I don't know. Just, keep praying. There isn't too much more to say anymore, except Lord help us get back up the hill. Help us out somewhere, somehow. But giving prisoners a stimulus check? Leave your comments. I'll be back. Let me find my little mark here. There we go. Love yous.